Good morning, folks. This is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona with Arrow 3261, Lecture 15B. Now, Lecture 15 was on canned equations. Lecture 15B is titled Superposition. Superposition is going to be useful for actually everything we do with beam, uh, or a lot of things that we do with beams when we're analyzing for deflections and, and uh, slopes. And it especially works when we have a complicated loading that's difficult to evaluate. Now, once again, as we've said before, uh, singularity functions are the key to really doing this easily. And it's probably more easy than a lot of superposition. However, if you're using our 15 lecture 15 content using the canned equations from your appendix in the handbook, you will find that a lot of simple cases are there, but a lot of more complicated cases aren't. And sometimes the easiest way is to superimpose, to cleverly identify your problem, break it into a couple component parts, and then superimpose results. This is especially powerful when we're talking about using canned equations like we discussed in the first part of the video. So this video is actually going to go through that process in a little more detail. So stay tuned, and uh, hopefully this is helpful. Enjoy. Remember, we saw this example when we covered uh, indeterminate beams in lecture 13. And we talked about how to solve the beam, and we then solve the beam using singularity functions like this, where we basically took our load on the beam, wrote our loading diagram, wrote our loading equation, the singularity function for the loading equation, then we integrated, introduced our boundary condition, integrated, introduced our boundary condition, integrated, dividing by EI, introduced our boundary condition, integrated, again to get our deflection of the beam, plugged in another boundary condition. We got our reaction from that. After solving with the last boundary condition, we then plugged all of our unknowns into the original equations and got our equation for the loading, for the shear, for the slope, and for the deflection. We already covered this slide in lecture 13. Another way to solve this is using superposition and uh, we will look at that here. If we had just written the equation for this, uh, and once again, we're going to use singularity functions, but we could also use canned equations here. If we had only focused on one of the loadings, we keep the same constraints with one part of the load. We write our singularity function and solve the beam through integration and applying boundary conditions as we did before. That will give us the solution for this beam if we only had the first part of the load, which was the, axis, the uh, end load. If we then resolve the beam for the second part of the loading, which was this gradient load, we would get, we would write the slope and then the loading function, and we would integrate successively four times, plug in our boundary constraints, and solve the beam for that condition. Now, neither of these is the solution to our beam because our solution to the beam is really the superposition of both these cases. So taking the results, once again, we have this propped beam with a gradient loading. This consists of two pieces. One is a gradient load on a cantilever beam, and the other is an end load on a cantilever beam, where the end load represents the force in that constraint today. Superimposing our two results, we then uh, get the equations of the combined loading and can then solve the beam by combining that through algebra. As we see here, getting now the slope and the deflection at a single point. This slide is uh, out of Beer and Johnson, and basically what it does is it says if we have another combined load, like this one with a distributed load and a point load, we can solve it for with the same boundary conditions and a point load, superimpose that on the distributed load, and we'll get the same solution that way. Here's another beam. We see this one can be written 
by a corticycline can be written with a singularity function, or we can take this beam and note that it's equal to these two loads with results superimposed. This is an example of how that loading for the two terms, the slope at various points, can be additive in our super, superposition problem. And this goes and finishes the combination. Here is another beam. This would be a propped beam. And we see that this particular prop beam can be written as a distributed load and a point load. And once again, we can solve using either of the methods. Now, you'll notice when we write a singularity function, we wouldn't normally need to superimpose our loads because if we write the singularity functions, it handles this combined loading rather simply. But if we're going to use canned equations, it's uh, often necessary to simplify by breaking up our beam into various pieces and then piecewise putting them back together. Here's another example, sample problem 9.8 from Beer and Johnson, where we have a simply supported prop beam with a distributed load. We can solve this just by writing a singularity function with a reaction at A, a reaction at B, and the distributed load. Or we can go and find two conditions. One is our canned equation for a simply supported beam with a distributed load. And then we add that to the case of a simply supported beam with a point load, where the point load is in the direction of the reaction. We solve both pieces, superimpose the results, and that will give us everything we need. And that's done here, and here, and here. And putting all that together. So. This was a very brief lecture looking at superposition a little further. While a couple of the examples showed superposition of singularity function loads, normally there would be no need to use superposition because singularity functions handles these kind of problems so efficiently. But we use that to illustrate how we might superimpose so that you can go and apply that when you have canned equations. Enjoy, good luck, Merry Christmas, signing off.